day for the magnitude of the story in circling the government, I think this would probably be top of the news agenda, and let's address it now. Hundreds of criminals in uniform are getting away with sexual misconduct, racism and misogyny in Britain's biggest police force. The Commissioner has conceded after this so-called devastating report by Baroness Casey, commissioned in the wake of the murder of Sarah Everard, of course, by former Met Officer Wayne Cousins. The Commissioner of the Met, Sir Mark Rowley, is in the studio with me now. Simple question to start with, Sir Mark. Well, thank you for coming in initially, but why? Why are they getting away with it? Good morning. It's, it's horrific, isn't it, Nick? And, and sort of reading some of the stories and talking to some officers, it's hard for it not to bring a tear to your eye what they've encountered and what's been badly dealt with. Frankly, we've been too weak at setting standards in the organisation. I think there's been, um, there's been lots of good intent, but when you get under the surface, and Dane Lewis case, he's done a fantastic job of really getting under our skin, you find that we've been too weak, too forgiving of standards that should be in any sensible organisation, which say that's a red card, you're gone. And we haven't done that. Uh, and we are going to do it on my watch. And that's sort of it, the, the hundreds reference is, is my estimate. Um, we're currently sacking 30 to 50 cops a year. Um, that's clearly in a system where we're being far, far too weak. Um, we need to be more robust than that. And over the next few years, we need to be removing hundreds of officers from the force who don't live up to the values the public would expect of us. My understanding, Commissioner, is you can sack these sort of officers, these officers, but on some occasions they return. Explain to my listeners, so you and your blokes and women do all you should, to use your expression, here's a red card, and then they come back on the field. How come? It's a bizarre, over-regulated system. Cops aren't subject to normal employment law. There's this whole um, uh, sort of framework of police regulations. And changes over the last um, uh, decade means that those decisions aren't always taken by the chief constable, in my case, the commissioner and my top team. So you can sack people in certain circumstances um, and then they can be reimposed on the organisation. We've got people who um, have committed serious criminal offences who we've sacked and have been reimposed on the organisation. They wouldn't even pass vetting. It's completely, Let's just it's stop completely, it's so, completely so crazy. So you have an officer forced on you, he, she wouldn't even have passed vetting initially to get the job and they're back in the job. Yeah, us having sacked them. Now, the Home Secretary um, has been really helpful and I'm not, I'm not suggesting this is all down to regs. There's a lot of weakness in our system and we should have done better. I'm not trying to avoid any responsibility for that but it would help to have more teeth and pace in the regulations. And I'm really grateful the Home Secretary is up for having a rapid look at that. I mean, just a couple of examples. One officer facing 11 misconduct cases, abuse, sexual harassment, assault, fraud, improper disclosure of information and distribution of an explicit image of himself. He, reformed a, he received a formal sanction, but it was not dismissed. And another six misconduct cases against him for oppressive conduct, harassment, neglect of duty. Um, he, he stays in post as well. It's, it's shocking, isn't it? And... I think when you look under a case like that, what you will find probably is that there are some of the cases it was very hard to get the evidence together to prove it. But the point is that person from that pattern of behaviour needs to be out of the organisation and we need to be creative and determined to find a way of doing it. Just like we do with criminals on the streets, when we get intelligence that someone is a repeat offender, we will go after them until we find a way to deal with them. When will you reform the system where chairmen or chairwomen can enforce, impose offices on you that you don't want? Um, that's the Home Secretary looking at the regulations rapidly, which is, uh, which is excellent and I'm very grateful about that. Um, I, but there's lots of reform I should and must do. So I've built um, what I've called the Anti-Corruption and Abuse Command so the tactics we've used to go after detectives in the past who used to have corrupt relationships with criminals, and there's much less of that than there ever was, we've been on top of that, using the same tactics to go after the racist, the misogynist, the homophobes in the organisation, practically targeting them, sting operations. We're going we're gonna to root them out of this organisation. You can't look me in the eye and say there's not another Wayne Cousins in the force at the moment, can you, Commissioner? Uh, I can't look you in the eye and say that we haven't got officers who are treating women appallingly, absolutely not. The evidence says that we do, and I'm going to sort it. OK. Um, coming to other matters, you, you mentioned it could bring a tear to your eye. Can I ask you, Commissioner, did you shed a tear when you saw the, main, the length and breadth of this report? Um, the combination over the last few weeks of, uh, of seeing advanced drafts of the report and talking to officers in the organisation, I have shed a tear. I'm not surprised. And yet... It's not that long ago that you had a senior post at the Met. I remind my listeners you served, as I've got it here, from 2011 to 2018, rising to the rank of Assistant Commissioner. You never saw or heard any of this sort of material or things no. going on? So I, so I spent most of that time, as you know, and we spoke about the time, running Counter the counter-terrorism yeah. um, operations for the country and particularly busy that time with taking on ISIS. Um, 
I sat on some misconduct panels. I was pretty ruthless. There was almost nobody I ever kept in the organisation. Um, I'm sort of, I've always set very high standards. I think the the thing about my position, you're not going to see things yourself. We need to root out and find it. That's the that's the that's what's different here. But you never got wind of it as an AC, a senior no. cop. You all this. I know you're not the commissioner, but you're still a senior. All this is going on. And you don't get a whiff of it, um, Commissioner? So I didn't run the misconduct system in my time no, there. Uh, so, of course, you see individual cases of, of, of um, awful behaviour and you deal with them as they present. And I've always been sort of um, very determined and ruthless about those individual cases. I think the scale of this, Louise Casey has got under our skin like nobody else before. It's, it's very powerful. It's very humbling. Um, but we will, we will sort this. Is, well, I can see your determination. I can see that. Is this a McPherson moment for the Met? It's of that order. I think it is, it is exactly of that order. I, having had sort of four years out um, of policing, I came back to policing five weeks ago and I have been talking from day one about reform. Um, at the heart of our organisation, the vast majority of the thousands of men and women who do amazing things day in and day out, and I know you're a big supporter of the police, Nick, and I know you agree with that. I do. They're as angry as the public because they feel let down by the system and by, by leaders, and we will do better. And the reason I came back is I know we can succeed because of that spirit, that passion and that determination I see in those colleagues. Um, they're let down by us, and yet they still come into work every day. They work crazy shifts, and they do amazing things for the public. I can tell from your voice, you know you've got a job on your hands. Trust in the Met currently is at four, sorry confidence confidence in the Met confidence in the Met is at forty nine percent. That almost questions whether you blokes and women can do your job, doesn't it? It does. So the, this, the, how will you build the confidence? So up, over four years, we've had we've gone from the confidence in local policing has gone from high sixties in a pretty much straight line over four years to high forties, and underneath that, if you look at certain communities, so for example, London's black community, it's really sad. It's even even lower than that. So there's a lot to do. At the heart of it, I've got to repair the foundations, which are our integrity. This is about the integrity, which some too many colleagues are corrupting. But then there's other things to be done on that. There's the strength of our community policing, which has been degraded over the last decade. Um, there's the reliability of our routine response, the sort of things you've discussed with callers in the past. All of those are important, but I, I need to start from our foundations are our integrity. I need to go after these people and get rid of them. Something that really frustrates my listeners, as you reference them, Commissioner, are these protests that we see, whether it's Extinction Rebellion or Just Stop Oil, and there is a sense that your blokes and women are not doing enough. You're providing them with cups of coffee, in some cases taking north of four hours to get rid of them. Why? So, uh, from what I've seen, and we're not getting uh, giving them cups of coffee, if there are any cases of, of that, then those officers will well, get I've advice. I've got audio, but don't well, worry. Okay, if you've got, well, if you've got audio of it, that officer was, um, was wrong and they'll, and they'll get spoken to. That's not the intent. Um, Why can't they get hauled away, Commissioner? I think over the last few days, we've been much more rapid. We've done it in sort of 30, 40 minutes, which is, I think, a, a reasonable turnaround. Um, we we have to sort of wait till it gets to a certain stage to intervene, which frustrates me. Hel- helpfully, um, we've been working with um, TfL and local councils um, in the next but couple But if they'd of- done it outside the mall on the day of the Queen's funeral... They'd have gone before their bottoms touched the ground. It's the scale yeah. of the disruption. It's the scale of the disruption, isn't it? That's what that's what we have to judge and assess is the scale of the disruption. And we're influenced by um, the local council. We're inf- influenced by TfL and how much they assess the disruption. Uh, the law is annoyingly complicated. I have been spending 200 officer days every day on this who should be out in communities tackling the antisocial behaviour that matters to people, tackling knife crime, and they're messing around with these... Um, but it uh, wasn't when Boris Johnson was coming not. back from meeting the Queen. Coppers got off their motorbikes to drag those demonstrators away. We didn't sit and watch then. Why can't it be the same? That's, that's a protected movement of somebody who has, uh, <laughs> as you'd expect. It's a, it is a different scenario. But, but, I, I, but they can be cleared but, but Nick, off, but I, I can't, I, trying to go to work. No, I, that's, you, you understand it's a different scenario, Nick, and you're being, well, slightly, mischi- to... I, I know, you're being slightly mischievous, but I do... More than slightly. <laughs> but, I, but I do absolutely get your point. It is frustrating for London. It's, 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 well, it's damn frustrating for me too. I... The team have been... Um, they know what I expect. They've been working faster and faster on this. We've been getting people moved within sort of 30, 40 minutes. And if um, the very constructive work with TfL does lead to an injunction, that will give us more preventative powers to intervene even earlier with some of the ringleaders. We've got political turmoil on at the moment, Commissioner. You'll be aware of that, the cost of living. Is the Met preparing for any form of unrest or disturbances this winter? 
we're, we're always ready for um, challenges. That's what policing's about. Um, day in and day out, we're dealing with complex issues, and um, we've we've talked about talked about some of those today. We're taking on knife crime. We're taking on social behaviour in communities. We're taking on fraudsters. That's our that's our job. And if there's if there's unrest, of course, we take that on as well. We're going to be hearing a, a budget of sorts later today from Jeremy Hunt. All departments, he says, must make cutbacks. Must view review their spending. What might cutbacks mean for the Met? Um, I know that the government have committed in their manifesto previously to 20,000 more police officers. They put the resources in and I, um, I trust and hope that that continues. What would it do if they have to cut back on that? Uh, clear. I can always make more use of more police officers and that's, what I, that's the direction I'd like to be going in. Lastly, as the most senior police officer in the country... We're going to be looking through the course of this week at incidents that have happened up and down the country, whether it be, and there is an ongoing trial, the fatal shooting of a girl in Liverpool, schoolboys being fatally stabbed in the north, people have even been attacked for their mobile phones in Bishopsgate or their watches. They talk about a lawless UK. You're the nation's number one cop. When you hear that or read it, how do you react? We're not a lawless UK. That's sort of um, hyperbole for media headlines. London is one of the safest major cities in the world. Um, even with the challenges we face trying to drive down knife crime, it's one of the one of the safest global cities in the world. We're not a lawless UK. There are always more that police can do, and you see incidents like that um, awful um, death of in that shooting incident in Liverpool. That girl, and it sort of it saddens us all, doesn't it? But I don't think we should see it as something which is happening day in and day out um, on the streets but, of the UK because it's not. Well, it, a Bishopsgate commissioner. A bloke got robbed for his mobile phone at Knight, Knightsbridge. A bloke got robbed of his of his expensive watch. If that's not lawlessness, Commissioner, what is? Well, you can pick two crimes, and those are things that we wish hadn't happened. And of course, we're going after the offenders. But you can't turn two crimes into lawless UK. That's a that's a shock jock approach to headlines, isn't it? But it's not. I could take you up and down. I could take you to Birmingham, where they've got a record number of knife crimes there. I could take you to Gateshead, where a teenage boy was fatally stabbed, and Huddersfield, and I bring you Liverpool, and then back through London. That's a very grim picture for the country, Commissioner. I, th I think you're um, you're talking it up, Nick. I mean, clearly, we all want violent crime to be less. We've made um, good progress on um, on violence in London um, in recent year, in recent years. I think there is an issue with robbery. Excuse me. Yes, go ahead. <coughs> That's right. There is an issue with there is an issue with robbery. Um, robberies are higher than we want it to, and we're doing a lot of operations on that at the moment. When you say there's an issue, what the, the numbers? Are the, num the numbers have crept up a little bit, and so we're going after that at the moment. Okay. Uh, and do you seek advice from previous commissioners who've been in the top job as well? Of course I do. I, I know most of the commissioners from the last two, How couple did of decades. How did fair? What was she like in her tenure? Uh, so I, I I talked to I talked to people for wisdom and counsel. Um, it's not for me to critique uh, my predecessors. I'm focused on. This is the organisation I face at the moment and the challenges we've got we started on. Here are the crime issues in London. It's my job to take those issues on. You've got to go. Can we invite you back to take calls from some of the people that you and your colleagues police uh, when it's suitable, when yeah, you have let, time? Let's find, let's find a chance to speak again. Yeah. I know there's many they'd like to speak, would like to put questions to. Good luck to you and the men and women serving under you. For everyone's sake, it thank needs you to very work. Much. Thank you very much. 7.45, LBC News headlines. Simon Conway. The Met Police Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, has told LBC the force needs to be removing hundreds more officers every year over misconduct breaches. The new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, to make an emergency statement this morning aimed at stabilising the market. And Ukraine's capital, Kiev, has been hit by several more explosions this morning. LBC weather, windy with rain, then showers in the north, dry with sunny spells.